Gentlemen, a very good day to you here from sunny Dubai and I'm here with another tutorial video talking about uh, P3D, Active Sky for P3D and PFPX and how you get them to all to work with each other in order to use basically PFPX and Active Sky for P3D to make flight plans for Microsoft Flight Simulator in 2024. Bit of a tongue twister, but there we go. So. Many of you use Microsoft Flight Simulator, many of you probably use SimBrief. I've got nothing against SimBrief. If you use SimBrief and it works for you, I'm not going to hold it against you. I quite like PFPX. PFPX gives me a little bit more granular control. I find it a little bit more of an in-depth software, and if you really know what you're doing, you can probably do a little bit more with PFPX. However, SimBrief is always improving, and it's not a bad place to start. And for the vast majority of simmers, I think they don't need any more than SimBrief. So. But... For my purposes, I use uh, PFPX. I've just reinstalled Windows. And with it, I formatted my drive and lost my installer P3D. And then I realized, how do I get Active Sky to install, Active Sky for P3D, that is, without P3D? It's a difficult question to answer, but not an impossible one. And I've worked out how to do it. To do it, I had to install P3D. But then I realized you don't need all the files in P3D, not, certainly not all 30 gigabytes. In fact, I only did 20 odd megabytes. So I'm going to show you today how I did it. I'm also going to show you um, how you can export uh, weather files from PFPX that are suitable for PMDG aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Because if you just straight up export it and try and import it into the uh, flight management computer in Microsoft Flight Simulator PMDG aircraft, it'll come up with an error message saying invalid wind data uplink or something to that effect. So how do we make weather files that are acceptable to the FMC in Microsoft Flight Simulator? I'm going to show you all of that now. So let's get started. The first folder you're going to need is in your documents folder. There's three folders you need. The first folder you're going to need is this prepared V5 add-ons folder. That's all you need. The folder. You don't need anything inside it. The only reason I've got something inside it is because I've got what Active Sky is installed inside it because I've already installed it. But this is what Active Sky will install in your Prepare V5 add ons folder within your documents. Simple enough. There's two other folders that you're going to need. And you can place them anywhere you like. But I do recommend you place them on the same drive as your PMDG folders for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I'll explain why later on in this video. So I've placed it on my D drive. Go to D. You see Active Sky dependencies here. And you only need <coughs> two folders. You need your program files folder, which would have been in your program files, Lockheed Martin prepared v5. And that's where your prepared application is. There you go, you can see it there. But you only need these other files here. So a, a few DLLs, the weather folder, a couple of bin files in there. That's all you need. That comes to 20 megabytes. And then you need your app data files. This would have been in your app data roaming folder, Lockheed Martin prepared v5. And you only need a few of those files. This comes to even less. This comes to 20 kilobytes. In fact, I'm not even sure you need this RAR archive, but I've left it in there. So that's all you need there. These two folders, that's all you need. Together they come to less than 21 megabytes. So let's boot up Active Sky for P3D and I'll show you what it will say. Hang on, it's already running. <laughs> I have to start it again. It won't know where your prepared installation is. You're going to tell it where it is. I might have to launch it once more just for good luck. Log in. There you go. You can't find prepared. Oh, what a shame. Let's go and find it, shall we? Click OK. This PC, D drive, Active Sky dependencies. And it says browse for your prepared location, usually program files, Lockheed Martin P3D, V5. This is the one with the application in. So program files, it's this folder here. Click OK. Oh, there's another error message. You can't find the application data folder. Oh, what a shame. Let's go and find that one. So this is usually, it says Lockheed Martin prepared for V5. It's actually in your roaming, app data roaming folder usually. Let's go to D, 
Active Sky dependencies, prepared v5 app data files, click OK. Now it's going to come up with this error message. It's always going to come up with this error message. You only need to install this once. Doesn't matter how many times you click OK and install it, it'll keep coming up with a message. So install it, and what that will do is it will install this Active Sky P5 folder. And this is basically how Active Sky would have injected weather into the sim, into P3D. But because you're not going to run P3D, it's never going to acknowledge that that add-on exists. So the way we bypass this message is once you've installed it once, you only need to push cancel and then click OK on the next one. Then it will launch. We have Active Sky P3D running without P3D. Look at that. How cool is that? Now, we all know, or many of us know, how to get weather from Active Sky for P3D into PFPX, but I'll show you now. There you go, it pumps out the weather here to that location. You need to set that location. You go into PFPX, you go down here to weather. Oh, it's just picking up the weather now, that's why it's frozen. Just a couple of seconds. Go to setup, active sky, active sky path, and it's that location with the weather station list and the weather snapshot, which happens to be the same path as you find on the debug panel down here. So you give it that path, you click OK, and it knows where to find the weather. Simple enough? Great. Let's carry on. Now, I've made a flight plan for a PMDG 737 to go from Manston to Gibraltar. Let's go and have a look at it. There's the OFP. I'm going to release the flight. And let's export it. Now, if I were to export this, I've already set this up. But... Um, and I've shown you in a different video how you can use symbolic links and symbolic folders for PMDG aircraft to have all your flight plans in the same place and all your weather data files in the same place. So all my 737 uh, flight plans are going into this folder here, PMDG Nav Data Flight Plans NG3. And all my PMDG, PMDG uh, weather files are going into a similar folder, PMDG Nav Data Weather. And then I've got a flight plans. They're P3D flight plans, but they are acceptable by the sim uh, into my documents MS FS flight plans. So let's save these. Three routes saved. I've exported the files. Great. So this will work. It'll work absolutely fine for Microsoft Flight Simulator PMDG 737. You can go in there, you can load up the flight using the MSE 190, and it will import the flight no problem. But when you try and load in the weather, as I said earlier, it'll come up with an error, uh, weather uplink um, invalid, something to that effect. So how do we get it acceptable by the sim? I'll show you how. Um, it's using ActiveScribe P3D. Now, the only caveat with this is that it must be done before you start the simulator. It doesn't work once you've started the sim. It just doesn't see the change. So. You've got to do this before you start the sim. Flight plan, load. We're now going to go and pick up the flight plan from my documents, MSFS flight plans. Let me show you something before I do that. Sorry to skip about a bit. Let's go to Active Sky. Uh, let's hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me reverse up. I've missed a step here. So we know that we've just made, uh, where are we going, back a bit, flight plans, NG3. We've made this file here, which is the root file for the PMDG 737. That's absolutely fine. We've also made uh, the weather file. This is the one that cannot be read by uh, PMDG aircraft in MSFS. So how do we get Active Sky to update this file? Well, it turns out that Active Sky is looking for this WX folder in the Program Files folder of P3D. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the Simlink Creator to replicate this WX folder in our Program Files directory for P3D. But before we do that, we need to make a slight change. So we need to go into at SCAR dependencies, 
prepared, prepared program files and then click new folder and call it PMDG, PMDG because originally when you installed a PMDG aircraft it would make that PMDG folder and then there would be a folder within here called WX for the weather files and that's what it's looking for. So this is the path that we're going to link for the symbolic link. So let's go back and let's drag this weather folder onto our symlink creator. Path to fold to the folder wherein the symlink will be created and this is why it needs to be on the same drive of course because we want to make it a hard symlink. We paste that directory that we made, click enter and then we want to make it a hard symlink so we push one and you can only do this if it's on the same drive which is why I said it needs to be on the same drive. Push one, push enter, click OK, it's finished. Perfect. Now, we go back into Active Sky Dependencies, Prepared V5 Program Files. You can see the PMDG folder we just created, and within it is a WX folder. And that WX folder exactly replicates what is in the WX folder of our PMDG, the PMDG nav data files. So, you can see here that this file, keep a note of the time here, was made at 1707. It's now 1711. And when we import the flight plan that we've just made into Active Sky, the time on the date modified will change to show that it has been updated by Active Sky for P3D. So let's go back into Active Sky. Like I said before, what we're going to go to flight plan load. We go to Microsoft flight plans that I, I made one, the MSC 190. I'm going to click open. Just click refresh just to get the latest wins. You could even make it. I think the flight's at 35,000 feet. Let's just say it is. Update some more winds. And I'll just go back to here. And you can see now it's just changed to 1711. I think it was 1707 before. So it has just updated the time on the file. That means that that file is a new file. And because it's been generated by Active Sky and not PFPX, it is actually valid for. Microsoft Flight Simulator PMDG aircraft and that's exactly how you do it guys. So a little bit convoluted, there's a little bit of um, sideways thinking involved with this. Um, as I say a couple of caveats, the uh, dependency files, Active Sky dependency files need to be on the same drive as your PMDG aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator in order for the symbolic link to work and you need to do this step of loading in the flight plan and refreshing it before you start the simulator because if you do it after it's too late that's it guys thanks for watching and i hope this video helped if not that's fine too have a great day see ya